This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and well, here's something you don't see every day or every year lately. This is a new iPod Touch from Apple. It's the sixth generation. It was last seen 2012 when we had the fifth generation iPod Touch. So three years, a lot has changed here. And this is the first iPod Touch that's almost a parody with the current generation iPhone, which would be the iPhone 6. We're going to look at it now. So here it is, a new iPod Touch. It's been a while, hasn't it? And this is actually a very good update. We got the same A8 CPU inside. Clock's a little bit slower, 1.12 gigahertz, but uh, you still get about 80% of the performance there that you do according to benchmarks like Geekbench 3. And actually on some graphics benchmarks, it's, it's about the equal of the iPhone. So that's pretty nice for you gamers, and I think a strong segment of folks are buying this just for the healthy library of iOS games to play on it. As ever, 4-inch display. Now that's pretty impressive because it's not every day you find something that can make the iPhone 6 look big, but it does with the 4.7-inch display, and usually, well, the iPhone's still the small kid in the camp, the regular iPhone 6, that is, so you can see the size difference. Now, in terms of pocketability and hand-friendliness, particularly for kids, and I think that's one of the target markets for this because... Uh, there are those of us who just don't want to give small children phones, right? Makes sense there. Uh, a lot easier on the hands. Now, if you're an adult with pretty long fingers and large hands like I have, that could actually be a challenge to hold something that small and that slim, but you get the difference there. It's, it's wow, just about tiny, you know? It's available in several different colors. Apple has updated the color selection. This one happens to be the product red, so it's quite zingy. There's a very electric blue, a pink. That really is pink. They used to be that their pink was kind of more of like a salmon, you know, metrosexual color. Boys would be okay, girls would be okay with it. Now a little bit more zingy in the pink there. And then there's the new gold because, God, you got to have gold these days, right, thanks to the iPhone and the iPad. Silver, so you get the idea. A selection of colors are available. And gone is that little pop-out wheel that we used to have over here where you could attach a lanyard. So we just have the Wi-Fi window here, kind of not the most pretty design element there, but the rest of it really is very pretty and pretty much unchanged from a previous generation. You've got the nicely finished lens surround over here. The, the buttons are matching color to the body. So top is the power button. Side we have our volume controls. On the bottom with a little white outline that looks pretty cool here, that's your headphone jack and this is the lightning port. Yep, lightning port, modern port there. And here is the speaker. And it comes in the same clear plastic box like always too. Pop that out, you get your little design by Apple. Welcome to your iPod Touch and your ear pods, earbuds right there, and your lightning cable. No charger in the box. If you want a charger, charger, external charger, you're gonna have to buy that separately. Otherwise, plug it into your Mac or Windows PC to charge. So inside we have the latest, currently, generation of iOS 8.4 right here. One gig of RAM is available with 16, 32, 64, or 128 gigs of storage. The 16 gig is 199. Keep going up $50 in increment. So 32 gig, which I would recommend if you're getting this for games, because if you're buying this because you want to get into the iOS ecosystem, or maybe you just have a lot of stuff in your iOS library, but you've switched over to an Android phone, and you want to use this for the new Apple streaming music service, the existing Apple Music, you have the videos, a whole library. This is a great little gym buddy because it's so small and it's so light. I can certainly see doing that. Obviously, once again, for, for kids, it makes a lot of sense too. No phone involved, no picking up a secondhand iPhone and trying to deactivate it, all that kind of mess. And these days, with so many carriers having trade-in programs for phones, you actually don't get to keep your old phone anymore and hand it down to your kids. Well, uses for it right there. The display is 1136 by 640 for the usual Apple Retina-esque 326 PPI. It's nice, it's sharp, it has good viewing angles. Still no ambient light sensor on this, so you will manually set the brightness. It's pretty, it's sharp, it's colorful. Contrast not quite as high as the iPhone 6. It's about 800 to 1 versus 1400 to 1. From the last generation, the battery capacity has increased a little bit, but the real interesting story here is how much faster this has gotten. With the new Apple A8 CPU in here, you're talking something that's almost as fast as an iPhone 6. So for those of you who play games, you're really going to appreciate that. Games are going to be, wow, wickedly faster than they were on the fifth generation iPod Touch. Also, the rear camera here, up to 8 megapixels. The old one was 5. And you have a single LED flash there, no two-color LED flash like you have on the iPhone 
6. So this camera is about equivalent to, say, the iPhone 5C or the iPad Air 2. It's not quite as good, particularly in low light, as the iPhone 6. In part, probably because it has a slower f2.4 lens on the back. It can shoot 1080p video. It can do slow motion video. It can do time-lapse video. It can do panoramas. So all the features that you're used to from an iOS device are here. And it's a pretty decent camera. In good lighting, it takes really very nice shots that are hard to tell apart from the iPhone 6. In low light, like I said, not so much. Video quality, you'll see for yourself, it's not bad. It's not as good as the iPhone. And we'll splice in a couple of sample photos right now and a sample video so you can see for yourself. Certainly, it's a huge, huge step up from the fifth generation iPod Touch. Here's 1080p video from the 6th generation iPod Touch. It has software stabilization, not optical image stabilization, but it does a pretty good job, doesn't it? Also handling contrast pretty nicely. What don't you get that you might get on an iPhone or in some cases your latest generation iPad, which is the iPad Air 2? Touch ID. This is just a regular home button. It is not a fingerprint scanner. It doesn't work with the Apple Watch. That's this thing right over here. You still need an iPhone for that. Not an iPod Touch, not an iPad. So yeah, if you were thinking it would be the perfect companion for your new Apple Watch, no, you do need an iPhone for that doesn't have a GPS. It does location by Wi-Fi triangulation. It does have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac, so that's the latest spec for Wi-Fi. Also an improvement over the iPod Touch 5th Gen and Bluetooth 4.1. So how does it do on benchmarks? This is Geekbench 3, and well, those numbers are wildly impressive if you have an older generation iPod Touch. More than twice as fast. How does this compare to the iPhone 6? The iPhone 6 scored 1623 single core and 2908 multi core. So you can see there is a difference in the Geekbench 3, which is a more general processor test. Now, for Sun Spider, which is a JavaScript test where lower numbers are better, it scored 432, which makes it faster than many smartphones on the market, but not quite as fast as the iPhone 6, which scored 337. Now here's our graphics bench 3.1 test, where we did the T-Rex on screen and off screen. And you can see the scores are a little bit teeny there, but it scored 51 frames per second for the standard test and off screen 42.7. That is a very good score. And here the iPhone 6 for the T-Rex score. It scored 49.5 frames per second versus 51 on the iPod Touch. So go figure, not bad there, right? And for the off-screen test, the iPhone did 42.7, which is actually exactly the same as the iPod Touch. So for 3D graphics performance, which is, again, something you compare, really care about if you're going to use this to play games, which is a pretty popular use for the iPod Touch, it's good. It's very, very good. You're not really losing out, are you? All the iOS features you know and perhaps love or are being pressured by friends and family into using are here. You have the, the health app, for example. You've got FaceTime. You've got messaging on this, so you don't have to have an iPhone to do the iMessage thing. Apple's Photos, all the stuff. The App Store, of course, iTunes Store, and the music feature, too, and iBooks, and, you know, all the usual stuff that you can do with your iPhone. Here it is, except for making phone calls over cellular network you've got on your iPod Touch. So next we're going to check out some games because I bet you folks are interested in that. So first we'll test out Asphalt 8, a very graphically pleasing and demanding 3D racing game. Certainly, as you'd expect from an iOS device, the colors are very nice. And it's playing really smoothly. Let's do a little nitro boost and speed things up. Oh, occasional little slow down there. Of 
pretty easy to accidentally cover that bottom speaker. That's nothing new with your hand. Overall, it plays very nicely and smoothly, and it's easy to control. That's Asphalt 8 on the iPod Touch 6th generation. Alright, now we're trying out Nova 3, another demanding game. This one is obviously a shooter. Playing very smoothly. Definitely allowing us to kill it. So as a gaming device, iPod Touch, definitely there's a strong point right there. Really nice, sharp, albeit not that big, 4-inch display, good performance in games. Decent speaker, too. And of course, you can use headphones with this, and you're going to get a lot better audio quality out with headphones, not just for gaming, but for music, obviously, or if you're watching movies. So how about battery life? Wouldn't it be interesting if Apple, instead of making this wafer thin, decide to actually put a bigger battery. That would be pretty neat. Well, they haven't done that. They, they've increased the capacity. A couple hundred milliamps, so really that's just to power the A8 CPU. So you're looking at about the same run times as the last generation, which is about 40 hours of music playback time or eight hours of video playback time. In real life usage, it sits somewhere between the iPad mini latest generation and the iPad Air 2. So if you're playing games, obviously the battery is going to go down a lot quicker. If you're using it as a music player or watching videos or just for everyday messaging, web browsing, all that sort of thing, it's going to last you longer. Battery life is decent. In other words, it's not Oh my god, exceptional, but it's, it's really not terrible either. So there it is, the latest generation iPod Touch. And you know, I'm not going to say why does this thing does exist, because obviously there's a reason why it exists, or Apple wouldn't be making it. They're not a stupid company. Whether it's because you have children and you want to give them an iOS device to play with and enjoy without having to worry about cell phone bills and all that sort of thing, or hand-me-down phones that might not be in the best of shape, whatever, or you're a gamer and you're really into iOS games, but you're using an Android phone or a feature phone or goodness knows what else, BlackBerry, Windows phone. I, this is the fastest iPod Touch yet, and it's just about as fast as an iPhone 6, which, which is unusual for, for iPods, where they really lag behind often. Uh, you got Apple Music on board, you've got FaceTime, you've got iMessages, you've got everything there except for cellular phone calls. Of course, you can use it for VoIP calls, so there's that. Over Wi-Fi, you can do things like FaceTime, for example. And let's not forget, you get Siri, the voice assistant, for those of you who like that. Now, once again, as a reminder, there's no Touch ID on here. This does not work with the Apple Watch if you're looking for a companion for the Apple Watch. So that's the 6th generation iPod Touch, super skinny, super light, and more affordable, obviously, than an iPhone starting at $199 for the 16 gig. Available in a lot of zingy colors. We got product red here. Like I said, you got gold, you got blue, you have seriously flaming pink, silver, you know, several colors to choose. And I know some of you are wondering why this product even exists. Well, hopefully now you have an idea. Some of the folks who might have a use for this and if you're looking to jump into iOS and you don't want to deal with the phone contract or picking up a used iPhone and making sure that it's been properly deactivated and all that sort of thing, it's a cheap, easy way to get into it for Apple Music and obviously for playing games and stuff. It's pretty good too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit mobiletechreview.com for our written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.